We begin with breaking news tonight. Two people have been shot across the street from Rangeview High School in Aurora at East Adriatic Drive and South Rifle Way. One of those shot, an off-duty Jeffco Sheriff's deputy who is in critical condition. Nine News reporter Whitney Wild joins us from the scene. Whitney, what can you tell us about the shooting tonight? Well, can we know so far that Rangeview High School had been on lockdown? That has since been lifted. People are now allowed to leave. Very little information coming out officially at this point. Again, police saying that there were two males shot, uh, that at least one suspect, possibly more, is at large. I can give you a live look at the scene over my shoulder. You can see police still here. Uh, we have seen uh, quite a bit of activity of the canine unit out here at present. Um, again, can we know very little officially from police? Most of that information coming over the Aurora Police Twitter. We spoke with a man tonight who says that he heard gunshots and moments later ran outside. Here's what he said happened Children. next as he actually rushed to the deputy's side and held his head as he lay bleeding. Another guy that was there called 911. And I held his head up and we put pressure on his wounds and t started talking to him. He just said it hurt. It hurt. Where the hell is everybody? And I said, there's people on the way. Can we spoke with another witness tonight who says that the victim... Can we spoke with another witness tonight who says that the Vic victim in this case again that off-duty Jeffco deputy is his mother's boyfriend. We're still waiting to get official word from the police. We understand that their public information officer is on the way. Well, Deb and Mike, we were just briefed by Aurora Police a short time ago, and we do have several new details to bring you. Uh, one of those is being the, the deputy is still in critical condition. He was off duty at the time. But most importantly, police believe the deputy was shot during what they are calling an attempted robbery. They do not believe that the suspects knew that the man was a law enforcement officer. There was He was not in a patrol car vehicle of any kind, was not wearing deputy clothing of any kind. We're also learning this did happen around 7.20 this evening, so a little earlier than we first thought. Uh, the, we know the deputy, we're told, was able to return fire with at least two suspects. He shot one of those suspects in the leg. That was a juvenile who's been taken to the hospital. He did not suffer life-threatening injuries, but police are still searching for that other man tonight. They're using helicopters, canines, anything they can to try and track that man down. Now, at least one witness heard those shots. He reported hearing at least six gunshots. He ran outside saw the deputy lying on the ground with gunshots to his abdomen and chest. I figured it was laying next to him open. You could see the star and his gun was laying on the ground next to him. I squatted down and started talking to him, let him know he's going to be okay. Was he able to describe anyone to you? Or? He just said there were two black guys with masks that took off. If they see anyone suspicious, we want them to call 911. We're asking that they stay indoors at this time until we've uh, completed our search of the area. Now, police have not been able to tell us why that deputy might have been in this area, but witnesses tell us that they believe the man's girlfriend lived near this apartment complex, which is why he was here. As far as that suspect still on the loose tonight, police have not been able to get any details from the man they have in custody. The suspect fled. He jumped over a fence. He's described as being a black male wearing brown pants. We don't know his age. Again, we know the suspect in custody is a juvenile. The deputy's name is not being released tonight. Well, that was certainly quite a difference. One station didn't think it was important to, to give us a full description. The other station did a couple of times. You know, Denver is one of these cities. The Denver area is one of these places like Seattle and Portland and San Francisco, a couple of other cities where they're very self-satisfied, they're very smug about their black-on-white relations. But each one of those places I just mentioned is actually a center of some very nasty black-on-white and black mob violence. 
but the reporters and public officials are loath to talk about it. If you read White Girl Bleed a lot, you remember the story of Denver. It was a couple, from a couple of years ago, but it still kind of resonates now. There was there were, this was downtown Denver over a period of four months. There were dozens and dozens of episodes of black of black mob violence against white guys. This was going on for months before some reporter finally somehow stumbled over it. Went to the cops and he said, hey, what's up with all that stuff going on downtown? Is there a bunch of black people like hunting down white people? The cops kind of went into a panic, you know, came out and said, um, yeah, well, now that you mention it, yeah, yeah, something's going on down there. And then after a while, it turned out like, man, there were a lot of people that were getting hurt down in downtown Denver, but the cops and reporters and public officials just didn't want anything to do with telling us about it. This has happened several times in Denver, as it does in Portland and Seattle and lots of other places. You know, in uh, Denver, the Denver Post, I wrote a commentary about all this stuff happening in Denver. You know, I kind of named times and places, black on white crime, black mob violence, how kind of how the people there kind of were, you know, how you don't really think of Denver as that kind of place, but how it is that kind of place. So I sent it in. The editor of the editorial page called me. Oh, yeah, we're going to run it, going to run it. We like it a lot. You know, I go through with a couple changes. No big deal. So this, whatever day, and you know, these, these editorials are in the can for, you know, a day or two ahead of time, as opposed to some news stories that come in at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night for the next day's paper. Anyway, like six o'clock that night, I get a phone call from Denver. Uh, we're not going to use your commentary. The publisher read the commentary and he yanked it. Anyway, so it's almost like the same, you kind of see the same kind of thing happening here. I'm sorry to make light of, 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 of the press coverage of the stuff happening in Denver, right, in Aurora right now. But it, and, and our hearts are with the cop. But at the same time, every one of these episodes is a monument to the, to the idea to the unwillingness of people to tell the truth about black on white crime and black mob violence in the past. And so it goes on and on and on. All of a sudden, these two black people shoot another cop. When we find who the other one, what will we find? Will we find that this is the first time they've ever done anything like this before? Will we find that never, they've never been in trouble in school? Will we find that when the cops caught them, they went before a judge, the judge just slapped them on the wrist? Well, we're going to find, you know, we're going to find, of course, they've done stuff like this before. Of course, that black people in Denver who commit crimes are viewed not as predators, but as victims of white racism. That's the way they roll over there. That's what happened here. We can't do much to save this cop now. He's in trouble. He's in big trouble. But we can save the next one. This is Colin Flaherty reminding you if you're in Denver or Aurora or Seattle or Portland or in San Francisco or any of these other smug places. Everybody's telling you how cool it is there. Just remember, they're putting a little asterisk on everything they tell you. And if you go down at the bottom of the page, the asterisk reads, Don't make the black kids angry. <laughs>